this is a quick video about why I just think the new shows are completely wrong about the new Focus bike. First of all, we're just going to listen to what they say about price. I'm going to ruin them on that. And then later on, we'll go about the actual bike itself. Because I think the bike's decent and it's actually pretty cheap. You can you start to judge it, really, because it all depends on price. Now, it's cheaper than a Trek, okay? But it's the same price as a Scott Addict, which is interesting. Now, remember, Focus aren't in the World Tour anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's usually what you're paying for with a brand to fund that marketing, to fund seeing it out there. So you're excited to buy the brand in the first place. So you're not paying for that anymore. So to be same price as a Scott Addict, well, you, I don't know about that. A giant TCR in Australia, in a SRAM rival build, is $2,000 cheaper and comes with a power meter. Now... Right, so that is obviously Australia, but we'll go through the UK because it's actually... I think there's some misunderstandings here. Now, so the focus of Zalco Max 9.9 .9 is like the top of the range frame, like the best you can get. 7.2 kilo, pretty light. So realistically, it's probably going to be like 7.6, 7.8 once you add on pedals and all the rest of it. But anyway, it's £8,700, which like is actually pretty outrageous deal for Durace Di2 on a top of the range frame. And if we're going to compare this, now I reckon they compared it to this bike, the Scott Addict. RC Pro. Now, the issue is this is not their top range bike. If we go to the top of the range bike, this is the SRAM uh, red build, but it's the Jurace price is the same, 13,800. And you could argue the wheels are better. My point is, it doesn't even come close, the Scott, the value compared to this. And you might go, oh, the, the pros are saying, yeah, but we're not comparing like for like, you know, you've got the useless Zip 303 S's, which we've already ruined once, and the frame is not top tier. So it's an in incomplete comparison. Next, we go over Giant TCR. Again, there's actually two TCRs they compare. So if we go the actual TCR, we're going to compare the top of the range. Again, how much is this? 11,000. Kalex wheels, they're hookless, not ideal. Durace Di2 for the TCR. And then again, this is Durace Di2. DT Swiss wheels, okay, they're not the most exciting, but they're decent. Um, so yeah, again, it's way cheaper than that, like 2K cheaper. So actually, the 9.9 .9 build, top of the range build, is very, very good value for money in the world we're in at the moment. Obviously, it's still mega expensive, but actually, it's not really not bad for a top of the range, like best you can buy. Now, we go to the 9.8, and that's just an Ultegra build, um, but it has the same top of the range frame. Then it's like 6.6, .6, which again, is, is not bad for a top of the range frame. We're going to go on to their rival ETAP comparison, um, and this is, again, the, the 9.7 build, um, which actually then it gets pretty decent for the ETAP. I think that's probably where it does have it over the giant because the giant here, um, sorry, is this is not the top of the range frame and it's a co it's the same price six thousand pounds six thousand, so it's the same cost as the giant. Okay, this one does come with a power meter, but again, this is um, yeah, this this is six thousand. So again, it's like it's not a great comparison all in all, um, and I think the focus actually for a top of the range frame is pretty decent, um, is my personal opinion. Now, if we're gonna go to the rest of the bike, uh, I think it's it's not bad, it's a little bit quicker than the old one, 6.6 .6 watts. Um, I don't really know where the one minute 45 seconds over 45K has, it's got internal cable ruins. Um, you know, they've got some nice numbers. I, I actually think it's a pretty good bike. Um, they give you Newton meters, which is always nice, I'm sorry, Newtons per millimeter of like how much the stiffness is, which again is pretty interesting to see they actually give you the data. Um, and again, you can see that it's like 48% less comfortable, um, which is kind of rogue what they admit that, but then they reckon that um, it's compensated by improving seat comfort through the seat post. I mean, again, it's all chat in it, but it looks decent. The bars aren't integrated, which I always think is not not the end of the world. Um, it's, it's okay. Uh, again, internal cable routing is decent. Um, and yeah, so I think overall, I actually think it's a pretty exciting bike um, in terms of the fact that it's actually not mega expensive for what it is. Like, if we're going to compare it to other people, like, imagine buying this um, Izalco Max versus, like, an S-Works Tarmac. Like, you're saving big coins. So, if you actually want, like, top-of-the-range full build, um, then I reckon that's actually a pretty decent deal um, all around. So, yeah, those are kind of my thoughts. I think they just got bamboozled with the different frame types of other people of other manufacturers and that's why they thought it wasn't a good deal but nah it's a mad deal